What's going on everyone, Daily Dose here. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing all things sleep and as it pertains to mental health. So let's jump right on into it. There will be some funny memes as well, all jokes and all seriousness at the same time. But yeah, let's jump right on into this video and let's talk all things sleep in regards to mental health and sometimes what it can, what can be given in the inpatient setting to help with sleep and once you leave the hospital as well. So in my honest opinion, I do believe sleep is one of the most important questions asked in the mental health setting and in a, in a broad spectrum of uh, health settings, actually in all healthcare settings and in all, really all settings in general in regards to your physical and mental health, your sleep should always be discussed and you should always be focusing on trying to get a better night of sleep as well. So in my opinion, when it comes to sleep, let's go ahead and jump kind of into the inpatient setting. The most important question that a healthcare professional can ask is, how are you sleeping? Obviously observation at first, when you're asking someone about sleep, or even you're assessing your own sleep in general, but always, it's in my opinion with in mental health, sleep has to be the number one question addressed because your emotional state can be affected as well, which in regards to this, if you're not sleeping enough, your impulse control can be a lot, can be, can be a lot worse as well as your desires as well. So if you're not sleeping well, you can have sexual misfunction. You can have problems, the, you know, your libido status in general. Also, having mood swings. Now, what I mean by this is, you can, there can be, you know, you can be bipolar or be diagnosed with enough sleeping issues, but you can also have mood swings if you're not sleeping enough. So for example, if someone comes into the psychiatric setting and they're coming in for, let's say they've been using methamphetamine and they haven't slept for days, well, during that time period, their mood is gonna be up and down. They're gonna have mood swings until they get sleep. But even after they get sleep, they could be potentially affected. However, that wouldn't, once again, qualify as a bipolar disorder necessarily. That could be as a re that could be in regards to drugs, drug use. So I diverge a little bit, but once again, so just because you're not sleeping well, or if there's a lack of sleep, don't always jump to the conclusion that it's due to, oh, I'm not sleeping because, oh, I have this, that, or the other. A lot of things can be, you can address, you can address with actually, with without, without going to a healthcare provider. So for starters, starting with melatonin. So what I encourage patients a lot of time is when they first go in, once again, asking about how are they sleeping? And if they're not having problems sleeping, then at night, a lot of times it can be loud, but if they don't have problems sleeping, there's no need to, you know, use things such as trazodone, mel melatonin, things like that. But if there are problems with sleeping, if there are, that would typically be a first line treatment, trazodone, melatonin, things like that. Now, if that's not working, things such as Ambien can be tried, but I do warn that sometimes with Ambien, there are side effects. So sometimes with that, one thing that's been shown is that sometimes you're not going through your full sleeping cycle if you're using things such as Ambien. But once again, if you have to result, if you have to use something like that and that's getting you better sleep, that's better than no sleep, once again. Also, real quick, you have a higher chance of having sleeping issues if you are a night shift worker. So that's why I applaud all night shift workers. They should get paid more because when it comes to sleeping, we're not nocturnal. We have an internal clock, even when, if you're working night shift or you have abnormal sleep cycles, you have that inner, you have that rhythm inside you that regardless, 
if you're not going with it, you're fighting against it. So naturally there can be more problems long term being a night shift worker. Not all the time, but there can be. So that's why I applaud. And once again, all night shift workers I have the uttermost respect for. Also, one way to help with sleep, and I know this has kind of been everywhere, but it's just covering all things sleep again, is if you're having problems sleeping, do some push-ups before bed if you can do that. Sit-ups. Exercising before bed. Not Now, I'm not saying go run an hour, because that can cause that runner's high. You can have your endorphins going, can actually be harder to sleep. But I'm saying like 10 minutes before bed, followed by not using your phone for 30 minutes before bed as well. Eliminating that stimulus will only help with sleep. Now also, I want to end with this. I know this was kind of a short video. Before, once again, if you're, if you have any questions about this, always go see your healthcare provider. But if you can't, in the meantime, there are over-the-counter things you can try. And if you can't even afford, if you can't afford over-the-counter, which in today in today's day and age, things are expensive. Inflation is high. There are things such as exercise before bed, as I said, eliminating the stimulus before bed, no caffeine before bed, things like this. And I know sometimes, I mean, throughout the day, I work 12 hour shifts having to drink caffeine. I'm not going to lie. I, I rely on it like most other people, but it's in how I do it is in moderation. So if I'm needing some even a little later, so like past four or five o'clock, a little bit in my, for me is okay, because after that I go, I'll go work out. But in a small increment, never, and once again, never having caffeine past eight o'clock at night. Now that is your daily dose of mental health. I'm gonna continue to put videos out. Sorry, I haven't had one out in a couple, in a little bit, some stuff came up, but I will also be putting out a video in regards to uh, methamphetamine use disorder as well, and some interesting facts and experiences that I dealt with in the psychiatric setting with it. I'll be dropping that soon as well. Check out the playlist, 365 days of running. I'm running at least three miles every day. I've been posting every day and I'm almost, I'm getting close to day 300. So once again, like and subscribe, leave a comment. This is all things mental health. Keep all the crap out of it in the comments. I love you all.